now know the man who killed three people at a Pensacola Navy base legally bought the gun he used in that shooting. The FBI is now investigating whether 21-year-old Mohammed Al-Shamrani was carrying out an act of terrorism. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has voiced his concern over what he describes as a loophole in the law that allowed Al-Shamrani, a Saudi national, legal access to a firearm. News of Jackson reporter Eric Gavinier has been covering the base attack since Friday. Tonight he's joining us live with controversy surrounding that law. And Eric, uh, tell us what you found out tonight. Yes, well, you know, every time there is a mass shooting, a gun law debate soon follows, and this was no exception. But this time, a pro-Second Amendment governor is the one who is bringing the issue into the spotlight. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis didn't mince words when talking about 21-year-old Mohammed Ashamrani illegally purchasing a handgun that was used to commit a deadly mass shooting inside the gates of NAS Pensacola Friday morning. Well, that's a federal uh, uh, loophole that, that he took advantage of. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment applies so that we, the American people, can keep and bear arms. It does not apply to Saudi Arabians. According to U.S. law, foreign nationals can in fact purchase and possess guns if they are admitted into the U.S. for lawful hunting and sporting purposes with a U.S.-issued hunting license or permit. They can also legally obtain a gun if they are an official of a foreign government or distinguished foreign visitor designated by the U.S. State Department. Al Shamrani falls under the latter category. Former Jacksonville Sheriff and now Congressman John Rutherford says the conversation should be less about gun laws and more about the vetting process that allowed Ash and Ronnie into the country to take part in the military training. I'm not going to worry too much about him being able to buy a gun legally when we're putting him in a jet aircraft. That sentiment was echoed by Jacksonville gun rights attorney Eric Friday. The question we need to be asking is not where did he get the gun or how did he get the gun or whether foreign nationals who we're training in the military should be allowed to have guns. We were about to put this person into a aircraft. Although Asham Rani could legally own a gun, he was still prohibited from bringing the weapon on base because no personal weapons are allowed on base. Now, in the wake of that attack on base, U.S. lawmakers are now seeking to uh, suspend and even review uh, the um, the training, U.S. training of Saudi military members. Reporting live, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station.